for this video, what I want to do is show you how to find probabilities involving sampling distributions of sample means. And in this case, I'm going to be using the TI-84 graphing calculator. I also have this done with tables and the TI-Inspire graphing calculator if you want to see how to use either of those. Um, so that with this um, problem, what we have, the situation is the mean starting salary for a data analyst is $55,275. A random sample of size 40 is drawn from the population, and we want to find um, some following the following probabilities. And for this, we do have three scenarios. We have one with less than, one with between, and one with more than, so that you can see all three situations that will happen when you're dealing with probabilities. So with this, if you were doing hand calculations, these are the formulas that you would use. Um, remember that the mu sub x bar is the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample means. Um, and remember that the mean of the sampling distribution is equal to the mean of the population. Um, this is read as the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample means or the standard error of the sampling distribution, and it's always equal to the population standard deviation sigma divided by the square root of the sample size. And if you are using a table, you must convert it to a z-score using this formula. So if you're using hand calculations and have to show out your work to find z, this is the formula that you would use. I really won't be using this formula in this video because I'm gonna show you the shortcut in the graphing calculator. So with this, what we need to do is find our most important information in the problem. So we need to find our mean of our population, which is this 55,275. Okay, we need to find our sample size, which is the 40. And we need to find our population standard deviation, which is the 7,000. So those are the three things that we need from the calculator, or to enter into the calculator, sorry. Um, to do our calculations. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to be finding the probability that X bar is less than $52,000. So basically what we're going to be doing in here is um, the thing that we're gonna be looking for is the normal CDF. And I will show you how to find this in just one second. And the parameters that you have to put in for this is you have to have the lower value um, so your lower shaded region, your upper value, your mean, and in this case we would use mu sub x bar, which is just equal to the mean. And this is the part that is different from when you were finding probabilities of just a single value. For this one, you do have to make sure that you use sigma sub x bar, so you do have to make sure that you put sigma divided by the square root of n into your calculator. So this is what we're gonna enter for all of these problems. So that's why I said it was important to have all of this information here. So basically what's going to happen is any time that it says less than, our lower value is going to be negative 1 E99, which basically means positive infinity. If, and then our stopping value is going to be 52,000. And I will show you how to put that E in your calculator in case it's not already there. This is the default setting. So if you haven't used it before, that's what it's defaulted to. Um, essentially, this means negative one with 99 zeros behind it, which is pretty close to negative infinity. Um, as long as your value for your lower is more than five standard deviations away, you can also get by with just putting a negative one with a bunch of zeros behind it. Um, but this is the most accurate value that you're gonna get. Okay, um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab my calculator and with this, you're gonna hit second and the VARS button. So second distribution, and we're gonna choose option two, the normal CDF. You do not wanna do normal PDF because that's just one value. Our lower limit in here would be negative one. And then to get the E, you're gonna hit the second and the comma. You're gonna use this double E here and not the green E. So you wanna make sure that you use the second E. -E. This means scientific notation. So it's negative one E99. If your E is the same size as your numbers, that means that you use the green one and it's gonna plug in whatever value you last put in for that letter. Okay, um, the upper in this case is going to be the 52,000. Okay, the mean is going to be, again, the mean of our sampling distribution, which is the 55,275. And our standard deviation is our 7,000. 
divided by the square root of our sample size. So you want to make sure, and I will show you in just a minute, um, if you forgot to put this part in here, how off your answer would be. So it's very, very important that you plug things in correctly. So I'm just going to verify that I have everything in correctly. My lower is the negative 1 E99. My upper is the 52,000. The mean is the 55,275. And then we have the 7,000 divided by the square root of 40. So that's where I got all of those numbers was I just plugged them into these values here. And so since we have everything correct, um, we're just going to hit enter. And this gives us 0 0.00154. Um, so that would be our answer. It might be slightly different. For this one, it's the same as what I got using the table values, but sometimes um, it will be slightly different. Okay. Um, so with this one, we would just say that our probability is approximately 0 0.0015, which in statistics, this is an unusual value. Um, since it's so, un like this is one of those things that if you got a sample that has a mean that's less than 52,000, because this only occurs 0.15% of the time by chance alone, it's not very likely. And so um, it's more likely that the mean that they reported is lower than what they said it is. Um, so with this, just let me really quickly show you on this one how to write out a um, interpretation in case you have to do this. So we could say approximately, and most of the time we'll put it as a percentage, 0.15% of data analysts of or in a sample of size 40 will have a mean salary that is less than $52,000. So this is not very likely to happen. So approximately 0.15% of samples of size 40 of data analysts, if I took all of their, so basically what they're saying on this is that if you have 40 people, you take your 40 salaries and find the average, and the likelihood of that average being less than 52,000 is 0.15%. So it's not very likely at all. Um, for the next one, I'm not going to write out the interpretation. You would just do the same thing. You would just explain it in the way the question was asked. So for this one, they say the mean of the sample is between 54,000 and 57,000. So again, with this one, um, we're looking for the probability that our sample mean is greater than 54,000, but less than 57,000. So that's what between means is greater than 54,000, but less than 57,000. Okay, um, when it's between and you're plugging in the normal CDF lower upper, um, all you have to do for this one is you would do the normal CDF. Your lower, lower value is 54,000. Your upper is 57,000. And then you would put in your mean, which is the 55,275. And then you would plug in the 7,000 divided by the square root of 40. And before I do this really quickly, I did want to show you, I know that I said that and I forgot. Um, so before I plug this one in and change it, I did want to show you in your calculator how different it is if you plugged this in wrong. Um, so with your second distribution, normal CDF, let's say that you forgot on this point to put the divided by um, for the square root of 40 in here. This is just talking about one person. So the likelihood of one person having an average salary that is less than $52,000 is 31.99%. So you have an almost 32% probability of a single person having a um, salary that's below 52,000 out of data analysts starting out. Um, but you only have a 0.15% probability of 40 people having an average salary. So it's very different, the questions that they're asking here. So make sure that if it's looking for a sample, um, if you're talking about a sample and you're looking for the probability of that sample, make sure that you put in your standard error correctly. So again, to get to there, we would do the second VARS. 
normal CDF. This time we're finding between 54,000 and 55,275. Okay. And then remember that with this, we do want to do the 7,000 divided by the square root of 40 because we are looking for a sample of size 40. So we wanna make sure that we have the standard error and not the standard deviation of the population. Okay, um, so again, and I put this in, almost put this in incorrectly. I went to go check it. This should be 57,000. Since we're finding our lower is 54,000, our upper is 57,000, the mean is the 55,275, and the standard error is the 7,000 divided by the square root of 40. So if we hit enter on this, our probability of this happening is 0.1857. So this is very likely to, or 0.1858 if we round to four decimal places. If you did this with your table, um, because of the fact that you are using rounded values for both the z-scores and the areas, you're not going to get as accurate. So it is possible when you run it in your calculator that you will get a different value than the table. In this case, my table value was 0.8155, so it was very close, um, but it was slightly different. So just make sure that you are aware of that if you're supposed to be using tables. Um, just know that with between, the table value could be slightly different than what the calculator gives you. So if we had to interpret this, we could say approximately 81.58% of samples of size 40 of data analysts means salaries will be between 54,000 and 57,000. All right, so the last one that we have is the mean of the sample is more than. So for this one, we're looking for the probability that our X bar is greater than 57,000. So for this one, you're going to do normal CDF. This time, our lower limit is going to be 57,000 because that's the lowest value that we want it to be. And then we're going to go to positive infinity. So for this one, we're going to put in the 1E99 as our upper limit. And then we would put in our 55,275. And our 7,000 divided by the square root of 40. Okay, so this is what we're going to enter into our calculator. Our lower is 57,000, our upper is positive infinity. Remember, this just means one with 99 zeros behind it. So if I grab my calculator, second distributions, normal CDF. Um, so this time, our lower limit is going to be 57,000. Our upper is going to be one, and remember the E is second comma, nine nine. And then the other part is just gonna stay the same and we hit enter and enter again and we get 0 0.0595. So um, this is not as likely to happen as the last one, but it is in statistics um, with this since it's 0 0.05955 or approximately 5.96% of the time this is gonna happen. Um, that's, even though it's a small percentage, is still considered normal. Usually 5% is the default. Um, so if it's less than 5%, then it becomes unusual and you start to question it. Um, so this one's kind of borderline. Um, if you got one at 57,000, it's more likely to happen than the first one, but less likely to happen than part B. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.